Hi, I'm here at Electronics and I'm at the Zentronics stand. And for those Ampower uh, viewers, you might recognize, well, you won't recognize, here's the face to the name, Scott Williams um, from Zentronics, uh, founder and uh, CEO of uh, Zentronics. And we've got, I'll link it in down below, great one hour episode. In fact, you've been on twice, once with Have me yes. and once with Chris. So talking about test engineering and- Consulting, everything a contractor. Else. Right, uh, yeah, everything. okay, uh, let's pick it up. Cause how long ago did we do it? About a year now, I think. About, about a year, yeah. has anything happened in the last year? You got more employees? A lot, a lot has happened, yeah. yeah. So. Tell us. Yeah, at the time, I think we were about five or six employees. And um, if you count an intern who started with us recently, we're now at 10 people, which is pretty crazy. Uh, going through a bit of a growth phase, and it's always that thing now we want to just stabilize and work on, all right, how do we maintain the quality? How do we keep doing projects the same way, producing the same output without running away with it? Um, By quality, do you mean quality of the designs? Quality the... of the design, consistency of output, right? So uh, as an owner, I'm at the top here. I don't really understand anymore every project, what's going on with every engineer and every developer. I can't check every bit of work that goes out the door. And that's where things like a project manager come into play. But uh, you want a project manager who knows your industry, knows your field and knows what I expect and what someone's capable of. So it's a bit tricky, but we found someone who suits that role. So introducing that into the, the business now, as well as, as you'll see there, his background's actually systems engineering. Systems engineering is an interesting one that not a lot of people know about. But you realize when you understand it, you can't create a product in any industry without systems engineering. Yes. Requirements, verification, testing, baselining, all of these things that terminologies people throw around, but unless you actually have a proper system in place for it, you're just not gonna be producing consistent stuff. And most of your clients, I would imagine that most of your clients don't just want a bare, like, don't just want a circuit and a bare PCB design. No. They want a, like, a, a turnkey solution. Well, that's that's or... where I started, right? Right. When I was freelancing for two years, that's where I started, and it slowly became, oh, can you do firmware as well? Or, oh, can you take this into production for me as well? Or, uh, or I don't have a sensor that you, I want you to design. I, I just want a, a, a user need, right? So I want customers to be able to send data over here, but they don't know if it's Bluetooth, is it Wi-Fi, is it 4G? That's actually the start of systems engineering, going from a stakeholder need into requirements. And it's a whole field, a whole thing that, it really opens your eyes up to how much things can go wrong uh, and how to control it so it goes right. And that's, I guess, as we continue to grow and create some more awesome products for clients, it's a big, big next step for us. So what's your average uh, client? How long does a job take? Is it six mm. months? Is it a year? Is it a multi-year thing that they contract you for? Yeah, yeah, so uh, interesting question. So from an idea to a product on the market, we're pretty agile, but even with our agility, still about a year, right? For any given, give or take an average thing. You've got, you got big chunks of time like uh, prototype manufacturing, tooling, production setup. These are big one month, two block, two month, three month blocks of time you can't do anything about. Uh, so about a year, I'd say, if it's got a lot of software integration technology like this one here, for example. Oh, we, you, you've done the whole lot? Yeah, so oh. we did the whole lot, not the mechanical design. Oh, I was, I was gonna say, no, no, right. Yeah, do you do We don't like... do mechanical, that's, right, that's okay. where I've drawn the line, right? Industrial oh, and mechanical you've, design. You've drawn the line at that, so yeah. you don't even want to get... No, no, I find... Too I, specialized? It's not that it's specialized, so to speak. It's just a completely different way of working, right? right. You're thinking creative, you're thinking branding, you're thinking feel, yeah. mood boards, Got touch it. points. We could probably, maybe five years time, hire a mechanical engineer when it's those systems where we want to think about thermal capacity and how do we integrate it into a product, but industrial and product design, yep. producing like award-winning, yep. like this is an award-winning product. Right. Nice. There's no way we could just hire someone and they yep. can do that as well, right? That's a... and that reminds me, I used to work at Keycorp back in the yep. um, early 90s and they had one of the sexiest flat screen, I used to work in a flat screen division, yep. one of the sexiest flat screen monitors on the, you know, all the others were like square boxes yep. and this thing was very much like this, does this tilt? Or is uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it yeah, 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 it was, yep. it was even, like, it was really curvy yeah, and yeah, like absolutely. it was really sexy. And there's, so. there's so much that goes yeah. in at the start when it's just an idea, it's sketches, it's drawings, like yep. you can't just hire someone and they do that. Yep. Uh, it's not that simple, so. <laughs> right, um, okay. Yeah. So you leave that up to the customer and they'd either do that in-house or they'd hire their own. Yeah, so in this, in the design case. Design consultant. Exactly, so this, yep. for the case of this one, it was a really good fit. The customer was only one person, okay, he had funding. Oh, it really? Was a, it's, it's a CSIRO spin-out. Oh. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. so um, based in Canberra, these are the PCBs inside, you can oh, see. Oh, okay, right. These are my designs. Yep. So you can see we've got a few things like um, a H-bridge here yep. for Peltier, so heating and cooling, oh, okay. so it can yes. do either. A few like basic analog. Why, why does this need to heat and cool? What is it, a, some sort of uh, printer thing? So is taking a, a step back, this is a, <laughs> a dairy diagnostics device. Oh, 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 so look you, at that. you open oh, the lid. Oh, yeah. You put yeah. in your, your milk sample, which, which oh. has mixed with the reagent. Right. Uh, you go in here, you run your test. Uh, I think we have a demo profile set up. You start your test. Yes, go ahead. So it gives you the instructions. So wow. all of the software you see here, we developed as well. Again, though, oh. we didn't do the UX of this. The same company that did the product design of this, they're called Tricycle Developments, they did the UX. So we, we actually have a really good fit where we would do the implementation of a lot of the functions, but they would do the concept work on how should it work, how should it look. Uh, so we go in here and we, the thing starts, it says prepare the milk, go through, we open the lid, yep. close the lid, initialize, and this will go through a thermal cycle. And then inside of this, it has a, effectively a photon counter with a blue and green channel. And this measures the, the ratio of those, applies some very uh, specialized formulas and algorithms, and then gives you basically a go, no go on the quality of the milk sample. Right, um, so it just shines a various filtered light through and then yeah. uses a, how, how many photons get through? Uh, is, is, or millions and millions, counter? millions and right. millions. It's just different spectrums, right? Oh, okay. Filters for that, right. yeah. Got it. So yeah, this is, and this is the primary market for this is um, UHT. Long life. Oh, yes. So, long, long life. Um, okay. Yeah. So there's certain diseases and viruses that if the cow has those, uh, even if you package it correctly, it'll still curdle, it'll still go off. Uh, so yeah, this is a, that's just one idea. That's, that was one of the first products where we did the software, firmware okay, so and hardware. Quite, uh, this one's yeah, quite Yeah. Yeah. About, yeah. About, about two or three years old. Oh, this okay. One. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can you show us some other examples? Absolutely. So uh, uh, let's go over here. This yep. one's um, an interesting one. So, so this one's uh, an example of like an automotive product so we don't do automotive products in the traditional sense because that's a very niche specialized industry you know you're talking about every cent counts millions of units yes. what we do is more aftermarket products stuff that will bolt onto a, an automotive vehicle once it comes from a manufacturer uh a, like a consumer vehicle or you, would you consumer do fire trucks industrial. ambulances yeah right exactly right so in the case cars. of this we, the, the, the example here is more like uh yeah something that might be like a fire and rescue truck or a utility truck for example uh, and, and as you see here, this would be in the, in the cab. This is effectively the, the body controller. And throughout the vehicle, you have these nodes. And pretty straightforward, these are just a bunch of inputs and outputs. That's all they are. They're an extension of it. But these obviously have overcurrent protection, automotive transient protection, uh, over voltage protection on all the inputs and outputs. And all the circuitry's on the bottom, is it? Uh, or is it there's no, some no, stuff no, over here. The yeah, oh, yeah, there's stuff there. Yeah, and yeah. then on the bottom, you can see there's a all bunch right. of. Um, the microcontroller oh, yeah. yep. and hand go. transceiver and a few other things. This is one of my designs as well. Excellent. Uh, and and look, they're waterproof connectors too, aren't yeah, they? Oh, yeah, yeah. These are these are yep. really nice um, Deutsch ones. You can see the uh, yeah, the little rubber on the bottom. Ceiling there, really nice. Yep. Um, nice. Actually, you'll you'll like this detail. I'm yeah, sure yeah. Come on camera. Even the pins are marked inside the connector. Pin one and pin oh, two. Oh, are they? Yeah. I think I might be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty yeah. nice. Pretty nice detail. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yep, impressive. Good for okay. harness manufacturing, as you would know. Yep. Oh, harness I know all about harnesses. Oh, bloody. Oh, yeah. yes, harnesses. Yep. Um, speaking of microcontrollers, uh, mm. do you have your preferred a standard, one? A go -to? Uh, do you? Uh, Good question. What, what does you go to? Because I do know you use Outium. I think yeah. I, I don't know if I asked you this on the amp hour. No, or I don't think. No, I don't okay. Think we did, what but, did you um, go to, micro? Yeah. So uh, as a as our jelly bean, I'm going to call it that. Uh, STM. So that's our jelly bean go-to. Very mix of us have experience with it, and it's it's worked really well. Primarily me though, because I used to do hardware and firmware. I was going to ask, is that the reason the that days. because you yeah. already had experience with it, it's what you effectively, use. Yeah, and that's trickled down to the rest of the embedded team now. However, if there's any amount of Wi-Fi in the system, ESP32 go-to, right? They're super powerful, yeah. a dollar each, crazy, uh, yeah. crazy. Hard, hard, almost no, impossible no. to beat. Likewise. Bluetooth. Silicon Labs have a great range. Uh, Ryan uh, has a lot of experience with them, but my preference is Nordic, uh, the NRF series. We've got a good relationship with them locally. That support with the with the vendors, that's actually more important than the functionality. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, and then look, there might be occasions when we go outside of that space, like if it's a uh, not in this case, but if it's an automotive product where it might be really critical for safety reasons. I think like Texas Instruments have a range that's specifically designed around that, uh, or very high temperatures or high reliability. But on the whole, that's that's the mix of that. We've 
we've got um, a few projects where it might have like 4G, for example, and in some cases uh, we'll have, like I've, I mentioned, an STM and a uh, 4G modem separate. This right. is the traditional sort of architecture, yes. and it works really well. You can kind of have these buckets of things, they're sure. blocks, you can copy and paste them, but more modern products where size is driven, cost is driven, Nordic, for example, have a 4G modem, but it's the microcontroller as well, yes. like the ESP32 effectively. And uh, we've started to explore some projects with that, and that's, that's starting to pay off too. So there's always trade-offs and benefits, of course, in any decision, but um, leveraging what you already know, that's actually the most important trade-off, especially when you're a consultancy like us. Every hour counts, every hour is yes. costing the customer. So. Yes. And how do you typically uh, bill? Is that up to, or do you flexible Great for question. the client, or is yeah, it like yeah. hourly? Do you do a job thing? Great Which question, is better, yeah. pro cons? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, so. Because there's a lot of people who want to get into the consulting yeah, uh, absolutely. design well, business. What, what I will say is when you're starting out, you've got to take what you can get, right? <laughs> yes. I think I mentioned on the Amp Hour, there, <laughs> were, there were projects that, you know, even this one here, this is my first project, so I'm really passionate oh, about this oh, one. Yeah, that, that, that's your very first yeah, consulting yeah. job? Yeah, like, it's, like okay. it's like a trainer. So these are oh, a target. With, with like a laser gun, you oh, yeah. train your accuracy yeah, and, and things, right. oh, ESP32. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, now, in this case, this was like, fixed price, maybe a thousand bucks, something like that, to do this whole design. Oh. I can tell you now, there's no way, just, just to think about you this design You were working at $5 an hour dollars. or something, 10 bucks yep, an hour or something. absolutely. <laughs> uh, a lot's changed since then, and, and of course, as I also mentioned, as we've scaled, there's, there's these trade-offs, right? If it's a really important client, like a, a brand name client that we want to work with and be a part of, or it's, it's got hardware and software and firmware, we might commit to a fixed price. We want to be a, a part of that. There's value exchange there. Nowadays though, we're pretty well established. We're in high demand. We're doing a great job. We're producing quality outputs. Pretty much every project, we'll estimate it. We'll justify our estimates. If the cost needs to go up, we'll give clear reasons why and why we didn't predict that. But we never promise anything on a fixed price. And that's where you want to get to as a consultancy. Yeah, you want the luxury to be able to turn down clients you think are going to be a hassle. Yeah, yeah, or, or as unfortunate as it is, if there's a complication with the project, the clients are the ones who have the idea. They have to take the, the, the trickle-down risk. Look, we need another $10,000. We're going to have to get another $10,000 of funding, whatever it might be. There's always going to be exceptions. So back to that value exchange, uh, say government projects, that will never be open. That will be a fixed budget. You're not, you, it's, you will go out of business if you mess that up, right? Uh, and I'm not against doing those. It's just when's a good time, when's it going to be a good fit? How hard is that phone call? You've got to phone them up and say, this is way harder than we thought. There, that, and that's, that's the sort of stuff that you can get coaching, you can learn how to run a business, you can get support from your team, but uh, that's the stuff that's the real art. That's the stuff that's the real art, and a lot of it's down to, well, how have you treated the customer up to that point? Regularly checking in with them, giving them updates, regular cadence, or has it been the first time you've talked in three weeks? Yep. And I can imagine that would also factor into you don't want to get into the uh, the actual 3D product design, the uh, aesthetics of a product, because that is one a whole that lot a more subjective. You could say, all right, here's, you here's, might here's think the it's pricing. Fantastic. We'll give you five concepts. Five. That's a lot of concepts. And you'll be able to pick from those, and they're not happy with five concepts. They won't I want like more any concept. Of them. Not happy with this. I'm dissatisfied with your work. Yep. Oh my god! At least, even this is a little bit subjective. But at least, look, it reads temperature. It, yes. We we did the spec. The spec. Is it met. does the job. There is a lot to say for and staying away from that. And that's where this <laughs> systems this, engineering. You can't apply systems engineering to the look and feel of a product. Yes. No. Um, no. That's right. You've got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Scott. It's oh, been thanks awesome. Thanks for stopping by, Dave. Yes, and we'll link in the Amp Hour episodes, two of them, down Great. below where you talk for it. We talk about this for like an hour. Excellent. So if you like this, check it out. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, mate. Catch you next time.